take 7 this video is how to get right this topic is about distributions of a function of a random variable so we have a random variable we take a transformation of it and the question is what is the distribution of a thing the story of, of this starts in problem number 40 so if you haven't watched that please watch that first because I cover the case of discrete single random variable and that's easier than what I'm doing today so today we're looking at a single random variable and it's continuous this is important result if a random variable is z in England we say z but today I feel like saying z because it's easier to say for one thing z is norm, standard normal then if you take z squared that is a new random variable follows a chi square distribution with a degree of freedom right, that's the parameter 1 right, I think it's a bit more tricky when dealing with continuous and we have a few methods here two uh, more general methods are the CDF method and the PDF otherwise known as a change of variables otherwise known as a Jacobian method and that gets what gets the PDF directly this CDF as the name suggests you get the CDF first before you get the PDF a final method we can use in this problem is the uh, MGF method now today I'm going to do the CDF method because for this problem it's the most direct and the uh, quickest so let me just solve it first and then let's fill in some fill it with remarks right then what do I have right I take the Z so let's say Z so it's a standard normal so it takes anything on the real line we square it so I think you can agree that it's just a parabola passes through the origin looks like this so what we note first is the kind of values that uh, these variables can take so Z anything on the real line Y you can say see it takes anything from zero inclusive all upwards i non negative values so we can kind of write the method down of the cdf method in steps let's do it in two steps oh yeah the idea what's the idea the idea is to write down the cdf for this transform variable in terms of what we know and what we know is about the uh, cdf of the original variable in this case being z Okay, so step one, I want to write down CDF for Y. I give them, right, so this is a particular point. Uh, by definition, it's this. I put a subscript Y to because we're going to deal with uh, two kind of distributions here for Y and Z. So yeah, this is for Y by definition. How is it related to Z? Well, Y is equal to Z squared. So saying this is the same as saying this, where we're now swapping from the uh, CDF of Y to Z because it's about the random variable Z these two statements are equivalent alright so this second step to the third step is important how do we read this guy here this guy here says I want to find the probability of Z such that when you square Z squared it's less than or equal to Y now Y or should I say little Y because it stands for realization of Y is uh, we've got to do this guys just if you can just sketch this thing on a piece of paper just grab a paper and pen right pick any old y you like small y okay say this particular value don't care what it is then this saying what for what values of z I'm gonna get when I square z it's going to be less than or equal to y I think you agree here just draw a horizontal line here where it cuts the graph here y just take it down it's going to upper value is going to be here and the lower value is here and anything in between is going to give us values less than or equal to y so what we have is that z is going to be it's a, it's a set of points right so on this interval such that uh, that value on the interval is going to be less than or equal to y when you square it so you can work that out if that's y that here must be square root of y yeah z must be equal to square root of y because if you square root square that that's going to give me y and likewise for the other case it's going to be negative so it's symmetric about zero in other words we have this expression so I say again this is saying what are the values of z such that when you s take the function of it this is squared it's going to be less than or equal to a particular value we call it little y well it's this statement is equivalent to saying when z is between that and that okay but we know how to calculate this kind of solve this kind of problem uh, when we're given the 
pdf of the variable here being z it's we look over here we look over here and uh, yeah we look up here because this is how you solve it so for a particular value uh, random variable say x we know that if capital f is the pdf of x then it's just this minus that right in other words we want the area between a and b is going to be the CDF calculated at point B, i.e. area under the curve less than B, let's just say that very formally, minus the area under the curve under A, right? So that minus, all that minus that little bit of the tail gives me the uh, area in the interval, which is what I want. And that's all I've done, guys. I've written it here and here. Instead of using big F, though, uh, I've used this capital Phi. Why? Because that's the kind of standard notation for um, the CDF for a standard normal. You can see that in your stats tables at the top of the page, usually, all right? So that's what that that's all I've done here if you're unhappy with that just put, replace it by a big F right next step right so this line here if you want to see it is like that set to about zero here now um, I don't like that minus there because I can see there's a relationship between this and this because we use the idea of symmetry because normal distribution is symmetrical about zero this is equal to that uh, do I need to explain that? Well, this is negative value, so let's take... Yeah, so this, guys, uh, here's my normal distribution. Z is less than or equal to A. It's got an area in the green. If you want negative this guy here, that's going to be that small tail. But if you look at it by symmetry, it's going to be the same as if you went to the other side and it's the upper tail. And that's what this is saying. The area under the curve is 1, right? So it's 1 minus the area to the right of that upper value positive instead of negative hence we'll get the area in the upper tail all right so that's purple is equal to that bit there negative through the brackets remember negative and negative makes a plus okay and um, so you get two lots of that minus this importantly remember this is we are track the values of uh, possible values that we're dealing here with. so we said that y is bigger than or equal to zero right at the start so we've got to put that there I can leave it there, but I can tidy it up now for the end of my first step. I can tidy it up by writing it like this. More compact. This is y being 0, and then uh, CDF is takes value ze 0 for y less, than, le y less than 0. OK, that's end of step 1. Step 2, following fact. Probably most of you know this. Right. For a continuous random variable, the CDF of it is continuous. So if you differentiate, and if you differentiate it, that's going to give you the PDF. All right, so that's the result. That's the result. Differentiate with respect to the variable uh, here. So that's what we have here. We want to differentiate the CDF with respect to the variable, and that's going to give me the PDF of variable. I don't want to put. I could put a subscript y there, but I'm only got. I'd, uh, I don't need to here because I'm not going to get talk about more than one PDF at this point. Oh yeah, I am, but I've got a special notation for it. All right, so here we go. We need the chain rule. We need the chain rule because CDF of f is equal to this, and this is a function of some other function y, uh, being the square root of y here. It's the other function. Right, notation, guys. If capital phi is a CDF, this little phi is is the, how we denote the PDF. All right, so instead of using little f, we use little phi. So here we go. That's little phi. So function of a function, chain, a chain rule. Do the derivative of the big phi first. Okay, so it's little phi. Write the same. Write the innards there, and then differentiate the inside. Right, respect to y, okay, that's what we get. Two and that two cancel, so we have that. So the rest of our algebra, right? That's this method is is the key. And um, then we need to know what is the form of the PDF of a normal. Well, I've just written it here. You know, you can look it up if you like. Some of you have to. If you have to memorize this thing, guys, um, don't do it. I would suggest that you do it for the general case. For general mean mu, a, a normal variable with a mean mu and variance of sigma square, right? Because then you, for this one, you just set mu to zero and sigma square to one. So we subs that in, where instead of x, I have square root of y. So put square root of y here, square root of, then you get one y there. That's how that you get that. Okay, tidy up a bit. 
properties do that can bring that in because above square root there you go and this holds for again I've emphasized it's not for any old y it's for y bigger than or equal to zero and if I were to plot this guys how would this look for y bigger than or equal to zero it would look something like this okay this is the function let's call it a little f that's a function now this guys happens to be the PDF of a chi-square variable with one degree of freedom whether it's something you have to memorize or not I don't know but that's what it is if you study the gamma distribution you will see that this is actually um, particular particular type of gamma where the parameters in the gamma are set accordingly and you're going to get this guy and that's it right that's the how you solve the thing did it in two steps also noting the values that my variables can take that's a CDF method I just want to kind of um, discuss it in relationship PDF method quite quickly. This PDF method is uh, I've done an example of this ages ago, uh, uh, years ago, talking about uh, 13. Is it? Um, yep, yeah, problem 13. I've solved that. Right for this PDF method, if you did it second way, you require the following. You require a particular um, function g. G has to be a one-to-one -one mapping or if it's not one to one at least you can partition the domain of x i.e. the space that the values x can take uh, into pieces where each piece is a one to one map right and those pieces obviously have to form the whole space so in other words if you have a whole space you can cut it up into intervals and each of those intervals uh, g is a one to one map on each of those intervals that's why it gets messy here guys because here it's not one to one right this function is not one to one screen function the CDF you see that we didn't have to have any constraints but we didn't have to say it's one to one so it works it works even when it's not one to one and that's why I emphasize this step here how this step differs from the CDF method is right about it's right here because you see when I do this to here, I'm not talking about the inverse. I was that's why I purposefully tried did not use the word inverse. This here, you know, it's the set of points that is e that when you square it, it gives me uh, it get, gets me um, le values less than or equal to y, and that's interval values. This guy is not the inverse of this, but it is if you had to use jargon. Uh, what we've done is taken we looked at the inverse inverse mapping. And the inverse mapping doesn't have to be the same thing as inverse of a function. What is a good exercise and this is done in a lot of these um, introductory mathematical stats books I've looked at so if you if you if you um, if you want to look up you can is repeat what I've done here right repeat what I've done but for any function not z so just call this x x follow is has a given PDF call it f little f then what is the uh, probability map distribution function of y of y where y is equal to x squared then all you do is repeat all I've done here replacing this capital phi by f and the uh, little phi by little f and when you do that your algebra will change will change from here onwards because why because when you're looking at a PDF that PDF doesn't have to be symmetrical does it but the normal is that's why this particular step to here is uh, specific because for the uh, symmetrical here uh, for the uh, yeah case of it's normal here because it's symmetrical but if we're doing it generally we wouldn't be able we wouldn't be doing this step and then what you find is when you work through it you get a form of the PDF which is split in, up into two bits and you'll see basically for that each of those bits corresponding to what intervals of the one-to-one -one, uh, map right uh, okay so this is this story continues because once we've done it I've done this an example here I've done an example here although I could do it better in the next one because the in the example 13 um, I did it for one-to-one -one map then what we need to see is what happens when this is not a one-to-one -one map like we could redo this problem for using this method and uh, then the next thing for us to do I'm not gonna I don't know if I'm gonna when I'm gonna do it or if I'm gonna do it is um, 
do this problem when you have uh, more than one variable. So if you do an introductory math stats course, maybe you need it up to uh, two variables. Just an ex example of a multivariable case. Okay, well, that was end of take seven. How did that go? I think I fit everything in this time, no omissions. Um, comment, like, share.